our viewers, once again we thank God for giving us this opportunity that we may again go together along this journey of looking into the word of God and also reading it systematically. Today we shall look into the outline of the book of Philippians and we thank God that this far he has been with us. So I want us to pray together before I give the outline. Amen. Our Lord, we thank you for the enablement of your Holy Spirit to read your word and also to cause us to understand that your word is life in us. We pray as we go through the book of Philippians that you may open up the eyes of our understanding even to understand how much you love us. That is why you have given us your word, the written word, that we may read it. We pray, believing that, Lord, you have heard us. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Philippians, as we said about the book of Ephesians, it's one of the books that were written by Paul while he was in prison and he wrote it while he was in Rome. It is among the four books that uh, many of the scholars believe they were written while Paul was in prison. And now this is the second book, the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, Paul addressed it to all saints in Christ Jesus who were in Philippi. And we know that he is the one who started this church on his second mission journey as we read in the book of Acts. 16 verses 11 to 40. In the book of Acts, this church is very unique because number one, it was the first church to be started in the European continent by then. There are also key things that happened during this time that Paul was in Philippi. Number one, as he entered the city, he went and met some women who were praying at the riverside and one of them or several, but Lydia is a unique person or lady in this church because he wa she was converted with her whole household and she accommodated Paul in her home during this time. Also, another thing is that there was deliverance of this girl who followed Paul during his preaching and she was possessed. She was delivered and after deliverance a great commotion took place because she was being used by her masters for their profit as a diviner. It was during after this conversion that Paul was taken into prison and there was a miraculous divine deliverance. And during this deliverance, there was conversion of the jailer and all his household. 
another key thing about this church is that there were other key believers that came up in this church, grew and matured, and became co-workers with Paul in the ministry. And Paul mentions them by name, the great workers that emerged from this church. One of them is Epaphroditus, who actually was sent by the church when they heard that Paul was in prison and was sent as a representative of the Philippian church to go and take a special gift of money that they had collected. This you read it in chapter 2 verses 25 to 30. Others that are mentioned by name are people or brothers like brethren like Eudias in chapter 4 verses 2, Clement and an unnamed friend and other others who Paul called them fellow laborers, chapter 4 verses 3. So it was a very important church as far as the ministry of Paul was concerned. The purpose of writing this book, this letter, by then it was a letter, it was mainly to thank the Philippians for the special gift that they had sent through the brother of money and also to strengthen them by reminding them that True joy comes from Jesus Christ alone. From the letter, we also learn that this church was very dear and very close to Paul. Because as you read through the book, you read that he had no issues with them. The previous books we have read, you remember like Corinthians and Galatians, some were even questioning his apostleship. Also, they shared in his interests and participated with him in the ministry, even by sending him money at, quite, at different times. And you read it in chapter 4, verses 18. He also says in chapter 1, verses 9, that the brethren here showed him a lot of love. And therefore, as you read the book, Paul refers to them as his beloved, his brethren, whom he longed for. And also he says in chapter 4, verses 1, that they are his joy and his crown. So it's a church that was dear to him. The church also of Philippians, you realize that as you read the book, it was a church that was in good spiritual health, despite of the sufferings that they were going through and even persecutions that were taking place. This you read in chapter 1, verses 28 to 30. The theme of the book of Philippians is joy. And therefore the key verse in the book of Philippians is chapter 4 and verses 4. It's a common verse. Many of us have also memorized it even from our Sunday school. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. The outline of the book of Philippians, I have divided it into four. Number one, it is joy in suffering, which is chapter one, 
verses 1 to 30. Number 2, joy in serving God, chapter 2, verses 1 to 30. Number 3, joy in believing God, which is in chapter 3, verses 1 to chapter 4, verses 1. Number four, and the last one, joy in giving, which is from chapter four, verses two, to verses 23. As you go through the book of Philippians, I pray that each one of us may take the charge to differentiate between happiness and true joy. Because many people are doing many things in this life in search of happiness. Others have even lost their faith in search of happiness. And many are seeking for happiness that means or depends on their daily successes or attainments in life. But you realize that happiness can be hindered by many things. Happiness, I would say, depends on the happenings that are around you. And that is why it is very different from joy. Joy is the quiet confident in a Christian. Confident assurance of God's love and his work in our lives. Having the assurity that he will be there no matter what. Whether you have achieved or not, by the standards of this world, you are assured that he is there. Joy for a Christian depends on Christ and Christ alone. Only Christ and what we attain from him is eternal. All the other things that the world may offer is temporal. Joy is out of a Christian giving room for Christ to reign in their lives. The assurance that when he reigns, he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And lastly, the understanding that joy, the source of joy, is you to others. You can be a source of joy to others. You can bring joy to others because Christ is in you as a believer. And this is what you see in the book of Philippians. And Paul says in chapter 4 and verses 1 that the Philippian brethren had brought him a great joy. My prayer is, as we go through this book, may each one of us be a joy and a clown to many. May the Lord God bless you as you continue to strengthen the family altar by studying and reading the word of God together meditating upon it, hiding it up in our hearts, and it shall carry us through, for it is a sure foundation. Shalom, and God bless you.